Welcome back to a new episode. Today we will be looking at Jax's The Troublemaker, which I think is a bit of a sleeper hit, just due to the fact that she's a monocolour creature, so people haven't really looked at her compared to the three mana exciting cards, but I still think she's got incredible potential. You can discard a card to create a token that's a copy of another target creature you control, gains haste. When it dies, you draw a card, sack it on the end step. So essentially she's giving them blitz, even though it doesn't say that. She herself has blitz, but it's very rare that we'll be using this. Uh, just imagine the applications with Traxxas and things like Meteor Golem. Discarding a card, destroying a thing, and then when this dies, you'll draw a card. So things like Cavalry of Flames stack as well, really well, because when it comes in you can discard any number of cards, then draw that many. And when he dies it deals X damage to each opponent and Planeswalker where X is the number of lands in your graveyard. So if you're discarding lands for the whole game with Jaxis, eventually this is going to be a win con by itself. If you have uh, two or three of these triggers go off, you might be able to just finish them off. Um, some of the key pieces in the deck, Palamonicon, doubling your ETB triggers. You've also got Chair of the Peaks. If you get two or three of these out somehow, you'll be able to uh, probably win the game from there. But yeah, essentially it's all your favourite artefact and red ETB triggers. And um, yeah, double your triggers and see what fun you can have. Don't forget the deck list will be in the description below. Hit that like button and subscribe. Um, subscribing to my channel means a lot more than um, it may seem. It really helps me out and uh, really helps the channel grow. So I really appreciate everyone who has done that so far. And uh, if you are so inclined, I also have a donations page, which is a Kofi account. So you can go on there and donate any amount you want, doesn't matter how little. Uh, so yeah, let's get into the games then. We go first against Torrens. Um, could be a nice matchup for us because White Green tends to have a lot of small creatures. And our removal is uh, number based, so we can deal with creatures, toughness 3 to 4, but after that it gets a bit tricky. A braid is nice, but I do want to ensure we get some land drop. So, as sad as it is, I might have to discard the Bergy and I think the Chandra for now. Keeping the removal because their general makes so many 1 1s. And we didn't get another land there, which is kind of annoying, but Clarion Spirit. So, thankfully, we did hit a land, which is great. I think this would be a good time to get rid of the spirit because it just makes incidental 1-1s. One and the Faithless Looting is fine as well. We could even discard the Ox of Agonis, to be honest. And maybe the Demanding Dragon. So yeah, it's very sad to get rid of lots of stuff, but sometimes you just need it to filter your hand. So here comes Torrens. So first thing we do is we're going to kill the torrent just to get him out of the way because you know, he provides a lot of value for them. And then we can cast Rob of the Rich and uh, we might get something decent for this turn or the next. Wow, venerated Luxon. We can cast this, that would be quite good. But they probably have a way to deal with the robber. Toski. We can still attack into that though. You never know, we might get something else. <laughs> we also get a ladder of our old Bowsers. So, we give for the elves. And then we can convoke the Loxodon, I think. Yeah. He makes for a decent blocker as well, especially against, you know, a white green deck. He's probably going to have fewer heavy hitters. Guardian Project. And a Legion's Landing. Still only one blocker so we can definitely get in there uh, so I think firstly we shall swing in with the couple of guys here so unfortunately we hit a land and this could be a good turn for the Jaxus because that means next turn we can cast the at sushi and get some value off him with the Jaxus. Champion of Lampard. Oof. This makes their stuff unblockable eventually. Okay, so we've got land on top. So we might have to say goodbye to the Cosmos Elixir. 
Let's swing in first. See what we get. An Alishnorn. That could just be game over, right? Well, our plans have gone out the window and we are going to cast Elish Norm, which kills their creatures, and that was pretty lucky. Wowza. We go first against Tatiova, and we're going to need all the help we can get because Tatiova is a very powerful high tier deck. Do we care about the Faithless looting, or would we rather strike it rich? Let's strike it rich for now, I think. Although we could have done the inverse, we could have drawn two, discarded the Striking Rich and still have it. Actually, that might have been better. Uh, yeah, let's go for the looting here. Oh, this is not fair. There's so many powerful cards here. I think we go to the Dominance and the Atsushi, as crazy as that sounds. Wow. All the dragons as well. Yeah, it's a shame that Sushi's in the bin. Splore. So they're looking to get a bit to four mana on the next turn. Legion Warboss. Solid hit there. So again, anything that just applies pressure early on. Not everything in the deck has to 100% synergize with the commander. Sometimes it's nice to have a complementary thing. So they can play additional lands here. But they can only block if they have 10 or more things. So let's go for Terror of the Peaks. This is a must answer card here. And the synergy of Legion Warboss is pretty sweet because it does an extra damage as well. Obviously. The opponent could have any kind of retaliation here, that's the scary part. Time warp would be annoying, but it's not the most threatening. Eureka moment, that's what that's what we want to see, isn't it? Taking the turn off to draw cards and play lands. Sweet, so we've got two mana open, and yeah. Damn, that was a solid start to the game. It, we, I don't think they could have lost as much longer, to be honest. We get first again. This is very lucky. And a really nice start in hand too. So yeah, and the ramp's really cool. Yeah, I mean, what, <laughs> what more could you ask for? Leather armour. And I think I'm happy to go for Lannery Storm here because she refunds the treasure. Like a turn two Lannery Storm is actually kind of awesome, right? And she pays back the treasure, so it's almost like nothing ever happened. And so on that turn, she was basically 2 and a 2 2 haste. Roaring Earth, whenever land comes in, put counter on a creature. That can get out of hand very quickly. So, I think what we do here is we swing in. So we could scare the hell out of couldn't we? Three, so we go for this. That means next turn we'll have three, four, five mana. So we could go for Torbran here. We could go for Terror of the Peaks. Terror of the Peaks on turn three. How's that? Yeah, it's a shame the mana um, leaves the mana pool, so we couldn't have, we wouldn't have been able to uh, use that mana. Wow, so turn three to have the peaks in the mono red deck. Sick. Okay, so facing Falco Spara. I keep wanting to say Sp Falco Sparta, but yeah, this card is really good. It's basically having Burles and Citadel on a um, on a creature. Sorry if you can hear me. Uh, my nose is a bit. Bunged up. So you will keep this hand. It's never ending illnesses with me, isn't it? Last week my tongue was in pain, this week can't breathe. It's going really well. Let's 
so we'll probably yeah we'll go for the frenzied guys blaster here. Although interestingly, um, this has no value because I didn't put twenty more instances of sorceries in the in the deck. So there you go. There you go, guys. I made a mistake. See it past time. Here comes Falco Punch. Ruin Blaster. So we could just kill one of the lands here. Which is legit. Seems good. So they've got really good defenders, unfortunately. So we're going to struggle to get through for now. This guy's got Flying Trample. Okay. Oh, so they're getting desperate. They're exiling this to make the land tap for three colours. Makes sense. So I think this is a good window for Jaxis. And uh, yeah, can't swing in just yet. But next turn we could do some Atsushi shenanigans. It's always at sushi. The game keeps giving me this card. Mothra. Right. So, okay, so go for add sushi. Then we will discard. Well, firstly, we'll target the at sushi. I think we can discard the bone crusher giant. That's not really going to do much here. Keep this guy. And we'll create three treasure tokens. And draw a card. It's really nice, actually. And then we can even go for the Shadow Spear. Uh, okay, so I'm going to hold the mana off because then the following turn we can go for the Meteor Golem and copy it. So if things go our way, we might get lucky. But we will see. They do have 5 mana and they do have access to white. So they can exile stuff, block the field. So I don't feel very safe, to be honest. Day of Judgment. That is really quite rough, actually. Because they get everything back. Um, I guess we'll just make some more treasures. That is exceptionally mean, I have to say. They're still good for the counters, though. They didn't want to kill the Shadow Spear. That's very interesting. Oh, we could go for Terror of the Peaks. Yep, so we're just going to be patient, guys. We don't need to reveal our hand yet. So don't forget, it's a one-two punch, and that's kind of illustrated in the art, which is really awesome. So you need to play her first, unless you've got a way to give her haste. And then you can follow up with the, uh, you know, the Haymakers. So it looks like they're taking their turn off to... Potentially find a land, I guess. But yeah, next turn. We've got a few options. We could go for Terror of the Peaks times two. That would deal with the Falco. Oof, they've taken their entire turn off. Or maybe it would be better just to go for Meteor Golem. We'll see. Okay, they don't have a shield token anymore. So yeah, we're taking, you know, quite a chunk here. Down to eight. Right, okay. Now it's our turn. So I go for Meteor Golem. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going for the, you know, the slightly safer route here. So let's go for the Falco. And target the Meteor Golem. Discard this. Yeah, I could have gone for the Terror, but I don't really want to... Um, I don't know, I feel like it's susceptible to a bit of board wiperage there. So I could spend a couple of treasures to equip the golem, couldn't I? That well, that wouldn't hurt, I suppose. Although actually, we probably want to give it to the one that has haste, right? Because this can attack. And then we gain some life here. And then when it dies, we draw a card. 
I actually can't believe how good Jaxus is. Definitely a sleeper hit. She's one of the first cards I bought for Paper Commander. From the set. That's what my instinct is telling me. So we get back to 12. And then the golem dies and we draw a card. So we can just rinse and repeat. As long as we have, you know, the good stuff. Well, in a way, this, this is actually kind of cool because if our golem survives, we can then go for the Terror of the Peaks and then copy the golem. There's so many options, aren't there? We'll, we'll see what they do. They could just board wipe. They could. I mean, they know we can do this over and over again. So. And. Uh, yeah, that's the thing about Falco Spira's shield tokens. They don't protect it from... What, do, what does it protect it from? So it says if it would be destroyed. So actually it does. It does actually protect it from Meteor Golem. Oof, they're getting like four tokens here. This is this is actually quite brutal. Okay, but now we get to... Uh, we get to have a go. So... Okay, so we play the untapped land. Go for the Terror. Give the Terror lifelink. We'll activate the Jaxis. So, yeah, we'll copy the meter gun. This way we get two damage triggers here. This is really spicy. Okay. So this deals... So only three damage though, isn't it? So we'll get rid of... I guess... Oof, what's the most annoying? I don't really know. I suppose the Conclave Mentor because it gives them double counters. So it's not the most um, effective turn, but... Yeah, it's a bit tricky because obviously Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power. So I, if I wanted to gain more life, I could have copied the Terror. But then it doesn't really optimise it for further plays. Wow. Wow, I feel I feel like we're, we're going to do fine here though. Because they haven't board wiped again. Kind of exciting. This is three colours as well. But I definitely think Jaxus elevates red. And she makes red feel more than the sum of the parts, which is really awesome. So, oh, that's a shame. We could have gone for the Torbrun, even more damage. Oh, that's a real shame. I've never actually had so many people quit on me than when I play mono red decks, which is very peculiar considering how powerful the meta is. But there you go. If you enjoyed watching this video, why not try some of my other videos on my channel? And don't forget to support me by hitting the like and subscribe button for more content like this.